It's Anne, Anne Alexander, with Caldwell Banker, Seacoast Advantage. Welcome to my first time homebuyer series. Hi, we've made it through the first time homebuyer program. This is Anne, Anne Alexander with Caldwell Banker, Seacoast Advantage. So now that you've got your keys in hand, what's next? Well, I've got a couple of checklists that I want to talk to you about, and uh, that way you've got everything ready and at your fingertips. So let's head over to my screen and let's take a look at those. All right, so this is something that came from NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors. And this is just something that you know you should think about when you first um, you know get into your new home. I would definitely uh, have the locks changed and um, get that taken care of. And if you can reset any codes for the garages, um, I know my front door is one of those smart doors, so you know I can uh, you know get that re recoded as well. And make sure you've got an extra key somewhere that you only you know where it is. Another one that's kind of, um, which I hadn't thought about, but this is good too, is to test your um, fire alarms or the smoke detectors and your carbon monoxide detectors if you have them. Um, check the temperature on your water heater so that way you're not going to um, you know, and get anybody hurt. I know I just did an inspection yesterday and the temperature on that water heater was like 130 and it should normally be around 120. Uh, make sure you've got fire extinguishers in, uh, you know, the kitchen and anywhere else that you feel that you may need one. Um, the garage, it was a good place as well. So these are just, uh, it's a nice little, um, you know, checklist here of things that you know that you need to repair, you know, that you didn't have done on the repair addendum, you know, and have the seller do. So these are just kind of um, little checklists here. You will find this, um, I'm gonna put the link to my blog and that'll be on my website for you to uh, be able to see this and then print it out. Uh, check your dryer, your then your water heater, um, check the fridge if it comes with the refrigerator, here in Myrtle Beach, we don't necessarily have sump pumps. I mean, they may out in the country, but I, you know, obviously in the city, I don't think we obviously don't have those here. Um, go ahead and change the filters if the filters in the air conditioning haven't been changed yet. Those need to be changed every 30 to 90 days, depending on what's going on in the season. Right now, um, in the last month or so here, we've had, um, and this is May when I'm recording this, we've had our, um, oh, all the pollen and everything. So the filter probably needs to be changed, even though I just changed it um, at the beginning of April. Uh, find a good HVAC company and, you know, get all that information. Make sure you've got all your homeowners um, and mortgage documents put someplace safe. And uh, I always try to keep all mine in my filing cabinet and uh, that way I've got them out of, you know, I can grab them if I need them. Any emergency preparedness, you know, know where your shutoffs are, that kind of thing. Make sure you've got uh, an emergency supply kit. And another thing that I'm gonna go over here in just a moment too, is being that we're here in South Carolina and it may not affect you if you're watching this from somewhere else, but, um, you know, we've got to think about hurricanes here. So I've got a blog on that that I just uh, posted as well. So there's you know, that emergency kit kind of goes into that as well because you need to be prepared. Um, have your list of emergency contacts, you know, plumber, electrician, um, your insurance agent, the water, utility, electric, gas, etc. So those are... Um, it's a pretty good little checklist just to have on hand when you first move in. And if you have any questions on anybody or any, you know, need a referral, please ask your realtor. Um, 
you know, we usually have several people that we can refer you to. And, uh, you know, we are a great source of, you know, uh, information for you. So just because we've closed the sale, that doesn't mean that we are not, you know, helping you and not here for you. So just keep that in mind as well. All right. So now I'm going to head over real quick to my other checklist that hurricane preparedness and right here hurricane season is june 1st to november 30th so even though this is when i'm recording this, it's actually may 4th we need to be getting all of this ready right now so your basic supplies need to be obviously water um, one gallon per day per person and make sure you've got probably three to five days worth uh, it sounds like a lot but if we lose power or you know the water something happens with you know the main water sources you need to make sure that you have water another thing too that we always do is that we always fill the bathtub with water that way we have you know some kind of water we need to wash ourselves or you know wash any dishes or anything like that because that way we're not using the drink the drinking water uh, making sure you have enough food to last three days or more non-perishable so i always like to shop at the grocery store even starting now and start um you know buying cans of soup a lot of times they'll have them on sale so you buy cans of soup you can buy anything that you can use with water, um, making sure you have tuna, you know, anything like that. Just, uh, you know, just make sure you start you start buying, buying things like that. Um, battery powered or hand cranked radio. And then there are weather radios out there, which are always good to have. Flashlight, first aid kit, which you need anyway. Um, making sure you have extra batteries for all of that. And which one thing that I really liked here is the whistle. Um, in case you need any help, you know, having a whistle. And every time I hear that, it reminds me of um, the Titanic movie when they, you know, she had the whistle. She was blowing it from <laughs> one of the um, Navy people. So anyway, um, dust mask. You know, sometimes you know, you well, we've all got masks now, so that kind of helps. But um, you know, making sure you have your masks around. Plastic sheeting, duct tape, um, those little towelettes, garbage bags, etc. So again, all of this is on my blog here, and then you can click on the actual list itself, and it gives you everything even more than what we just discussed. Hold that up a little. Um, you know, if you have a baby making sure you've got formula and diapers if you need medications or even if your animals need medications making sure that you have all of those on hand um, all your family documents and cash you need to make sure you have cash because if there is a storm and it comes through and it you know, knocks out the power we can't get um, money out of the ATM and a lot of times the credit card machines may not work either so it's just kind of a good practice to have have some cash on hand sleeping bags etc like I said there's some uh, great little ideas on here and you know you don't think about it you just oh well you know I'll be all right but you know no you need to be prepared so um it's nothing to take lightly. And like I said in my blog, you know, you'd rather be over prepared than under prepared. And that is in case of any emergency or any situation. And especially when we are in hurricane season, um, you know, we could get all of these watches and warnings and, you know, everybody's like, oh, and it may turn at the last minute so you can't be upset about that i mean you would be very very grateful that it turned at the last minute but if it doesn't turn at the last minute or if it turns at the last minute and comes right towards us you need to be prepared so that's my girl scout in me just making sure everybody's prepared 
So anyway, if you guys have any questions, I think these checklists will really help you with uh, being in your new home. And especially if you're, you know, if you've relocated here from another area, but um, like I said, I'm always here to help. And if you have any questions or if you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. And um, you usually have, you know, pretty good handle on uh, who's who and, and who can help do what in the area. So again, thank you for joining me for this first time home buyer series. I hope you got a lot out of it and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you got a lot of good information out of today's episode. I'll see you next week.